I am joined today by Gerald East Jr., a fourth generation tow boater that is now developing an app that will support the industry in some ways I don't even know yet. So, Gerald, thank you very much for joining me. Thank you, Mr. Tim. I appreciate you letting me uh, come on your show, buddy. Absolutely. Well, you know how these start. Uh, tell me, man, where were you born? Uh, born in Homa, lived in Ama, Louisiana until I was a teenager. Uh, got kicked out of high school and ended up going to live with my father in Ponchatoula. And then uh, graduated Ponchatoula May 18th, 2009, and stepped my very first boat May 19th, 2009, bud. Was that always the track? I know you, you said your grandfather and great-grandfather and father, all of them were in the industry. So I guess give me some, some family history as far back as you can to, to when you first. Yeah, so um, my great-grandfather, I don't know too much about him. My grandfather actually owned a company that was like Big D, Little D, Big E, I believe the name of it was. And it had something to do with Exxon, like way back in the day. They called him Captain Black. And um, when he passed away, my dad was real young. And all my uncles, I got like seven uncles, they all worked out there on the river when they were like teenagers. So it wasn't like what we got now. Uh, I even have a blind uncle that went and worked out there as a deckhand. Seriously. And... Um, so, yeah, so he had something to do with Exxon, and then my when he died, my father took over his one of his shares and sold his shares to get the house that I lived in in Ama. and yeah, I kind of always figured that this was going to be the route I was going. That's why I really wasn't paying too much attention in high school, but it didn't do too bad, so. Do you want to discuss uh, how you got kicked out of high school? Oh, man. Um, all right. Well, I probably have a lot of professional people watching this, and I hate to say it, but young and dumb, I ended up mooning the head of the school board while heading home on a bus. Yeah, and uh, did not know it was him, and just that was my last straw, you know, a little small detention and suspension and everything else. But, yeah, that's kind of what happened. Well, it could have been much worse. Uh, oh, a lot worse. Yeah. So what's that transition? Had you been uh, on boats before? How long has your dad been on the river? What was he doing? Oh, my dad's been on the river since the day he passed away, actually. Um, he, fleets were his main thing. He worked at ADM Ama Grain when I was growing up. I remember waking up at like three o'clock in the morning, my little sister, my mom, you know, going to pick him up or going to drop him off because she couldn't leave us at home. And uh, he became a captain. He actually had a very bad disability, learning disability. And my mother and the teacher that they hired kind of helped him get his captain's license to learn how to read. And once he got his captain license, they called him Captain Milk Crate because he'd have to stand on the milk crate to actually look over. He was like four what four nine four ten something like that so he was he was short but uh apparently one of the best tow boaters out here a lot of people from multiple industries from turn services to uh custom is who we really love but of course ingram ended up buying them out not custom uh, midland midland was the old company he used to work for and then um yeah, he was uh, a great captain, a good guy, fun to be around. And, you know, just seeing the lifestyle that he lived, I always wanted it. You know, I've always liked going out on the deck, of seven years old, going on boats. You don't see that too often anymore. Getting to drive the little boats, thinking you're doing some stuff, going down the engine room, thinking it was cool. So, yeah, this was always the route, buddy. Well, tell me about stepping out on a boat at seven years old. Oh, man, it's honestly boring. I mean, because you got to think, you didn't have cell phones like we had, right? So you just had your coloring books and, you know, what you could draw or read, just anything to kind of keep you busy. Captain on the pants was my guy, you know. That's what I used to bring out there to read. And uh, so you go out there, you know, the companies are fine with it. It's way back in the day, and this is – uh. I want to say the Miss Nelda was the quad screw. 
And that was the boat that he got the Ramey on. So four engines on the Miss Nelda and going southbound somewhere and me just driving it and him taking pictures of me, you know, watching the, the sticks as well. And, uh, yeah, just sneaking down in the engine room and you can't really do much because you can't really get into his way because he's got to handle the crew, handle the boat. And so you sit back there on the sat team, start coloring and start reading. How much time did you spend on boats before uh, your first official day as a as a deckhand? A total probably three 12 hour hitches. Three times that I could think of. My dad, for some reason, thought it was very important that me and both my little sisters went out on the boat. And he actually got to do that before he died, is bring me, my little sister, and the youngest one as well. So they do it once. Amber went once, and I went three times. I loved it so much. All right. Well, tell me, uh, this was 2009, May of 09, when you got into the industry officially? May 19th, 2009. Yes, sir. Well, tell me, uh, I guess, how that was. What would you, uh, how was stepping on deck officially for the first time? Well, it really wasn't deck. I actually started out on trenches, right? So I'm walking pipelines. Uh, I kind of wanted to leave my dad's name out of it, wanted to prove myself. So spring break, all these guys are going out to beaches and, you know, my friends are partying down and I'm going up and down the levee trying to find some work, right? So. I actually get a call on the day I'm getting graduated, on, on the day I'm graduating, May 18th, to see if I can come to work that morning. And I was like, I can't do it. I'm sorry. Can you call me tomorrow? Can I come in tomorrow? I graduate and I'm, I'm done. Like, yeah. So that's what we did. So May 19th, early in the morning, I'm going somewhere around the uh, Huey P area and we're dredging on the Donald Wood was the name of the boat with uh, Ronald LeCamp as the boat that we were sleeping on. And, uh, yeah, it wasn't what I quite expected because all of my life I kind of seen barges, and now I'm tiptoeing through freaking pipelines and, you know, just doing some crazy crap I've never heard of, sticking my hand in this big old pipe to pull crap out. So, the you know, the cutter head starts working correctly or... The dredge works correctly, whatever they were using at the point at the time. So, yeah, that was my first job. And then after that, I kind of wanted to get on the barges because I kind of want to learn that mostly. And then I left them to go to turn services. And I worked at Welcome Fleet for many a years, actually, and learned how to build and break 40 barge tows and, you know, how to run a fleet. How to actually run a boat too at some point. I got to put off fleet lights and stuff. My captain was very supportive, very cool, a good old friend of my father's. And um, I met a lot of great friends that I still have to this day. I'm very thankful for. And then after that, went to the inland side of Deloach Marine. I didn't realize you'd gone to Deloach. Before we go to Deloach, though, uh, anything interesting, any highlights or incidents that you can share? That happened along the way prior to uh, the jump to Deloach? The only, I really, we really actually were pretty safe out there at Welcome Fleet. Everything was handled pretty well. We we're all good people. The only thing that really comes to mind was when I was in the middle of training one of my best friends to this day. And it was, we had nothing to do all night. And of course, the last couple of hours of work, pouring down raining. My guy is still somewhat green, but still knows what he's going to do. And uh, what was it? Uh, Mr. Bill's Western Rivers fleet decides to break loose. So we're out there. They're calling us to come help. So we're out there. We're trying to tie barges. Me and him are like arguing and, you know, going back and forth because I'm trying to tell him what to do. And he's like, oh, quit yelling at me. And I'm just freaking out. That's why I kind of learned you got to, you know, be calm around the helm and everything else and calm with people. That's a big learning opportunity right there. But, oh God, I can't believe I'm telling this story. So we get all this taken care of, man. We get all this secured and everything else. And me and him mad at each other. We get in the galley. Captain's heading across the river to go drop us all off a crew change. 
And I'm looking at him and he's looking at me and we mean mugging each other and he grabs a cigarette. He starts smoking a cigarette and he's still mean mugging me. And then he looks down at the cigarettes. He looks down at me and slides me a cigarette. And that was the very first time I ever smoked a cigarette. And that was it. We squashed the beef right there. And that was probably the craziest thing that happened out there in the fleet at Welcome. You didn't get hooked on cigarettes, huh? You still smoking? No, I'm not still smoking. I'm down to the little mechanical device, but uh, I try to stay away from those cigarettes now. Yes, please do. Well, yeah. tell me about the jump to the load. So you were still on deck? Yeah, I was actually trying to get my captain's license at that time, right? So I got, I got about three years experience in now building all these toes and everything else. And uh, when I went to go get my license, they basically told me that I'd be restricted. I can only really work the Western Rivers. I can't go in. I was like, well, no, I, I'm not doing that. So I had to go find a company that went inland. And at that time, Turn Services really didn't have the affirmed and citation and were able to go in. Well, they had them, but they went up and down the river. So I was like, okay, I got to go, fellas. I'm sorry. And then went to Deloach. And worked for Mr. Zeeland and decked for his son, Trent, and made a lot of good friends and went out there and had to, what, just constantly jump from boat to boat to boat until I finally found the Bill Miller who really wanted me. And I worked with a lot of good captains on the Bill Miller, and then they trained me through the inland side by me taking my days off and working extra to go steer with Mr. Mike Canella and uh, an old cornbread, old Clay Trim was his name. And then um, that's kind of how I got all the knowledge from the inland side and doing the Houston Ship Channel and everything else. But last couple of months, of course, they're like, okay, now we're going to put you in the steersman program. So that was great. And then that's kind of how I got my license. And after that, I just kind of bounced around and tried to find a decent home. Who were your mentors on the Bill Miller? Oh, uh, Mike Canella was definitely a major mentor of mine. And he was an old man. I believe he passed away. I was sad to hear. Well, Clay Trim was the pilot. He was a, a new guy, too. But, I mean, he taught me a lot as well. Um. Michael Cassetti was a good friend of mine too. He, you know, we decked together and he taught me a lot and now he's a captain as well over there. And so I had a quite a few handful of people that really taught me a lot and can't think of his name. I can't think of his last name, but his name was Captain Jim on the uh, Zealand Deloach. And that, that man probably basically taught me, you know, this is it. You're by yourself. I'm not helping you handle it. You know, don't don't kill us. It was like his, you know, train of thought. Like, okay, I can see you can handle it. I'll be down there in the galley. You know, do you what said, you gotta do. You said you deck for Trenton. Oh yeah, actually deck for Trenton on the Alyssa. How was he as a boss? He was good, man. He was. I I kind of wish that he would have took that route to where he would have stayed with, you know, on the boats himself. You know, you kind of. He kind of had a different mentality. He was a real true leader. And I don't know what happened with the loach or why it closed down and everything else. But I do know that him, he, he went to the office. And I think he would have loved to be, I think he would have probably rather being be, to be out there on the water than uh, what he would have rather been in that office. Because, I mean, office life is a, it's a, fiasco of its own so i'm sure there's pros and cons in the office and on the boat but uh anyway so uh how does your career <laughs> advance from there so you get up to the wheelhouse uh or how, how long were you in the steersman program i i was only in the steersman program for like two or three months and this is with training with a de with a good captain ben moffitt who's like a legend out there right now you got his books you know hovering <laughs> all around I think he told me he's on his ninth issue. Yeah. Right now. Yeah. Seriously, you talking, Mr. Ben? Oh yeah. Okay. Oh, oh, Captain Ben. Yeah. Him and uh, I decked with his little his stepson, Preston. We were always pretty cool together. Him, old Boudreaux, and all. So, yeah, I know all of them, the dirt bags. 
But uh, after that, I went to Yazoo and learned in the Yazoo River. So that was cool. And then uh, I bounced around from current services again to LaBeouf to really try to find my home. But I always trip from Marquette. My thing is that I, I like to learn different things. So after all that bouncing around, I went to Excel Marine and started pushing the six pack up to the Sabine River and then started taking line boats, single screw line boats at that, northbound from Memphis all the way to the upper, upper Mississippi. And then I really didn't like that too much. I mean, it was, it was fine. It's a job, but a lot of, you know, just kind of waiting when you're northbound to wait for those big old southbounders to come down. And then it's just really flanking. It's just not, not my thing. I'm not really a fond of flanking the boat. I will if I have to, but not really fond of it. it takes too long. And uh, I kind of wanted to go learn the fleets now. So I ended up going to learn the fleets, going to learn how to headline at Clemson Marine, Cooper, and really got good at that. Once I got all the headline and finished, I uh, I was like, man, you know, I gotta move up to Kirby Inland Marine, and I had to leave them because I met my fiance in Jersey, and once I left Cooper, I went to uh, Kirby Inland Marine because I had to get a live on boat now that I go home every day, and now me and the wife are down here in Mandeville and. Now I actually got a fleet job with Kirby. Which fleet? Where are you working? 127, the retirement job. Kind of early for that. Yeah, you would think. Uh, I'm still bouncing around, man. It's, you know, I still like to trip around, go to different companies, still like to do different things, keep my uh, my skills still in check. What's uh, what's the favorite place you've ever run? Decking all the way up to Wheelhouse. Oh, man. um, Really? I guess my favorite place to run, I, and I'm weird like this, man. I don't know why, but yep, the Houston Shuffle. You know what the Houston Shuffle is? Fill you me go in. back for to Fill Freeport, me. Galveston, Bolivar. I love just doing all that, dodging this ship here, going up there, making this turn, coming back, build this, build that. It's just it makes it makes a trip go by. I love the Houston Shuffle, but I mean, also I am a river rat, so give me a headline and a dry cargo barge and watch me play. You know, sure. All right, well, me a long retirement job, I think. But let's jump to this app, Riverbank Professionals. Tell yeah. me about it. All right, man. So Riverbank Professionals basically started because I'm sitting on the boat one day and I got like three different calls from three different companies. Hey, can you come to work? Hey, can you come to work? And I had to turn them all down because I'm already on a boat, right? And it just got me thinking to like, man, you know, I, I got all these friends throughout these, throughout this industry. I mean, they would love to go out there, but what's the problem? You don't have the, the credentials for them. You don't know anything about them. Well, that's when I just, I got this random idea. I was like, you know what? I mean, maybe we need to start creating something. Maybe we need to start jumping into the 20th, 21st century and, you know, get a little bit more technological with this industry, especially with now we're getting all these college guys coming up, right? So that's where it basically came from. And it's the whole purpose of it is to introduce captains to multiple companies and figure out where they want to go, who they like better. Well, do, does this company have a fleet closer to my house where I go home every day? And for companies, it's like, I got 35 boats tied up. How can I crew them? Well, you got a whole hundred plus people right here ready to jump on a boat, you know, do the math, kind of, you know, finagle and try to get all these guys on the boat and try to make that, try to make that boat have some money. And that's how Riverbank Professionals kind of, you know, got created. And uh, where is it standing right now? Is it functional? Is it running? Uh, Riverbank Professionals is up, is almost up and running. It's, the dashboard will be ready in April, by the end of April. And uh, the app will be ready by November 1st. And the dashboard is going to be a simplicity thing just to 
get the ball rolling because I, I mean I, I constantly get calls and messages that uh hey you know I, i'm in this industry you know i make this much what can you do for me and that's like well standby cap i'm talking with companies right now we're you know developing relationships but uh, i have you on the list we appreciate your support so luckily the dashboard is going to be here shortly the app is going to have a little bit more of the bells and whistles um i want my guys to go to one place to find you know the river stages the tides and currents the you know how fast it's going uh the, how fast the river's going um the weather if it's foggy um something that i'm really trying to work on is like a like a radio to radio with the phone so like for instance you're down to huep and you're looking to take off to go up to luling bridge hey how is luling bridge over there and it'll ping everyone who's on the app around Luling bridge oh cap it's uh pretty clear oh cap it's foggy i'd stay down there um another safe little tool for us to use because you can't reach anybody on the radio and ask how Luling bridge is it's just way too far so we got that um you know fleet schematics is what i'm trying to also put in there you know these line boats going to the fleet. Hey, I need you to go to C1. I don't know what the heck C1 is. My first time coming over here. So the, you know, the fleet layouts is another thing I'm trying to put on there. Um, tips and tricks on the rivers, you know, where to be when you're northbound in the Mississippi River, or you know, how to, you know, what you should look out for, dangerous wise, turning out into the Houston ship channel. Just another little safe, just whatever I can really think of at this moment to make my fellow towboaters safer and hopefully something that they'll use. Uh, is this app as far as for finding work, is it going to be focused on, on tripping or getting people on with companies? A little bit of both, man. I'm, this app was, it's designed for my guys to find work whenever they want to state their price. That's what I do. I'm a trip captain and I also have a regular company. But one of the major problems with the tripping is that, you know, you go out and you trip and you got to wait 10 days to get your paycheck. And I never really liked that because, you know, you, your laundry machine breaks. You need three frigging days to get $2,100 to get a whole brand new washer and dryer. There you go. So that was another big implement. Something that we we're implementing is that uh, we're working with ADP to actually pay captains and deckhands and tankermen all on the day that they get off the boat, the next business day, to speak. So that is our goal and that's what we're trying to do as a company. And uh, we're also just trying to introduce companies to other wheelmen. Uh, there's, there's just, there's so many companies, but a lot of wheelmen just don't know who's around. I mean, you can look on the, the Facebook pages. It's just nonstop. You know, who's hiring? Where are they looking for a cook? Where are they looking for a deckhand? It's, it's like, now, why don't you go and make a name for yourself? Introduce yourself. I mean, the more you know, the more you should make. That whole industry, this whole industry is all about, you know, your word on the water. What does your name mean? And that's what this app is supposed to start implementing. How long have you been uh, messing with this thing? Oh, man, since the beginning of December 2022, 2022, um, it was kind of like a quick thing that kind of snapped in my head. And I was like, man, I'm, I'm going for it. This is the only thing that I could really, you know, something that I know that I can help my whole industry out with and something I can help a lot of companies out with. And it just was kind of like a spur of the moment thing. And I just kind of took a chance on myself. And that's the goal here is just to see if I can help the others become successful like me. Do you have a staff? I mean, how many people are, are working on this project with you? I have about seven people right now working for me. Um, two of them are tow owners and the rest is family, but, uh, and the rest is other companies. So. I mean, as of right now, I would like to make this a towboat in the industry 
with captains or deckhands, you know, I, I kind of want to keep it all within the maritime family is the goal. But as of right now, you know, you kind of got to get the help where you can get it. Sure. Uh, do you have uh, active members now or is it just a lot of interest that you're getting? Actually, I have active members. Um, right, the hardest part right now is the companies. It's trying to get a hold of the companies. Apparently, it was like this big thing in Houston this week about trying to hire new deckhands and new captains. So that kind of played a, you know, a part in hiring the companies. But trying to get someone to sit there and talk to them and, you know, get them to listen. Hey, man, I have all these captains kind of ready to go right now if you're ready and will. And uh, I did get like a, actually, yeah, we think this is a good idea from one company. I was like, man, this kind of interests us. Uh, you know, can we uh, meet what well, Friday actually? So I got a meeting on Friday and I got to talk to a pretty decent sized company. And, you know, I'm a, just let it kind of simmer with these two or three few companies and just see how this interacts and how this works and just constantly keep you know a good relationship with them and then just watch this thing hopefully bloom into something really big well uh once you go live or maybe even before like i was telling you we can try and do a live stream if we can market this podcast get the word out and uh we'll, we'll get your face back online and get get some folks asking more questions than i have oh i would love that mr tim yeah i'm a little nervous right now bro this is my first podcast so hey It'll be fine, man. This one's maybe a little bit short and sweet, but uh, but that's okay. Have, real quick though, have you heard of the Maritime Throwdown? You know Kenny Brown? Yeah, I've heard. I've heard of the Maritime Throwdown. I, that's like the uh, the Deccan Olympics, huh? Uh, he he yeah. called it. He called it um, Maritime Industry Ninja Warrior or something like that. Yeah, the Deccan Olympics is what we called it. Yeah. Okay. Did you, have you participated in it? Have you done it? Uh, no, I've never participated in that. I. Never really had time, man. Always yeah. constantly working, trying to keep myself busy. I didn't even really know about it till what, like two years ago. One of my friends ended up telling me all about it. That one of his guys he went with uh, got into the rope throwing category and was doing pretty good and almost made it pretty high. But other than that, no, I never really got to play around with that. Well, Gerald, I thank you for your time today, man. I hope everything goes well with this program, and uh, I'm sure we'll be we'll be keeping in touch on it. Oh, thank you, Mr. Tim. Appreciate you bringing me on, buddy. I'll talk to you soon. All right, man.